Hey guys, Popcorn Recaps here. In today's video, I will be telling you the story of the horror thriller film, Case 39. Spoilers ahead, enjoy the video. Set in Oregon, the movie follows social worker Emily Jenkins as she navigates the rising pressures of her career and the new case that was assigned to her. She is described as the number one call for people who don't have anyone else, and the first few minutes throw us right in the midst of the action. When she is assigned her 39th case, Emily visits the home of Edward and Margaret Sullivan. During the visit and conversation with the Sullivans, prompted by an anonymous tip that the 10-year-old girl Lilith is showing signs of neglect due to family problems, there is enough to raise her suspicion, and the family is asked to come in for an official statement. Outside the interview room, Lilith suggests that her parents want to send her to hell, but when questioned by Emily's boss, the girl is too scared to answer the question directly, and the family gets to walk free. Not long after, Emily meets Lilith after school and gives her her phone number in case she is ever in serious trouble. That same evening, a terrified Lilith calls Emily, who immediately rushes to help her. As soon as Lilith is fast asleep, her parents pick her up and bring her to the kitchen, where after a brief scuffle they manage to fit the girl inside their oven, turning up the heat. In the meantime, Emily arrives accompanied by her police officer friend, Detective Baron. They hear the girl's screams and break into the house. A fight ensues and finally Emily manages to rescue Lilith. Naturally, the parents are immediately prosecuted and put away with the judge questioning their sanity and ordering that they undergo psychiatric evaluation. In the meantime, Lilith is to be placed in foster care, but she pleads with Emily, who is able to convince the board that the most suitable environment for the girl is with someone she trusts. Emily visits the house again to investigate the scene further only to discover that the parents were barricading themselves in their room at night, a finding that she dismisses as just one more thing that confirms their weirdness. Meanwhile, Lilith seems to be adjusting well to her new life with Emily. She takes an interest in Emily's private life and family history, revealing herself as incredibly insightful. In a later scene, however, Emily catches Lilith, who has taken an old photo of Emily with her mother. Emily cautions the girl not to go through her private things without asking first. On another case, Emily learns that a young boy, Diego, has violently murdered his parents in their sleep. Detective Baron shares with Emily that Diego's family received a call which originated from Emily's house. Emily maintains that she was not that one that called the family. Emily and Detective Baron ask Lilith if she was the one that called, and she denies it. The detective, however, is not convinced. Emily visits Diego to ask him about the call, but the boy falls into a state of panic and collapses. Later on, while in the hospital, Emily tries to get the truth out of him again. Diego says that it was Lilith who called him, but then claims that it was a man he heard on the phone. While Emily is trying to get to the bottom of what happened, Lilith speaks to Douglas, who is a psychiatrist and a friend of Emily's. In a preliminary evaluation, Lilith has shared that she isn't afraid of the dark, of being alone, or of her parents. During the session, Douglas asks Lilith about her fears, but she provokes him to share what he is afraid of first. In an endearing story from his childhood, he shares that he's afraid of hornets. Lilith, on the other hand, reveals that she is only afraid of herself. When prompted further, she says that she sometimes has bad thoughts about particular people. One of those people is Douglas. Over the course of the conversation, the roles are reversed and Lilith asks Douglas if he is afraid of what is to come. When he says no, she corrects him and says that he should be. He discloses to Emily that in his whole practice, he has never encountered another child as threatening as Lilith. He also reassures Emily that he knows a specialist that he can call in the morning. Later that evening, Douglas receives a mysterious call. Thinking it's just a prank, he dismisses it, but not long after, he begins to hear a buzzing sound and goes to the bathroom to see what is wrong. He picks his ear and a hornet emerges. Doug manages to kill it and get rid of it, but then a few more appear, and then a whole swarm of them. Beginning to panic, he tries to get rid of all the hornets, but they are everywhere. More of them come out from his eye, from his nostrils, and from his mouth. He ends up hitting his head and breaking his neck in what appears as a freak accident. After attending Douglas' funeral, Emily's affection towards Lilith begins to wear off and her suspicions rise, which the girl consents. Emily watches back the interrogation tapes of Lilith's parents, Margaret and Edward, where her mother claims that Lilith is not her daughter and is the devil incarnate. Emily then decides to visit them in the psychiatric hospital where they are held. While Margaret is not in a lucid state and isn't fit to see visitors, Emily is able to speak with Edward, who discloses that Lilith is not the victimized little girl that she comes across as. 
He claims that she is in fact a demon who feeds on people's emotions, and is able to drive those she dislikes to madness by causing them to hallucinate what they are most afraid of. He explains that this was the reason why he and his wife tried to kill the girl to spare themselves and others from the suffering she can inflict. In a feeble attempt to protect herself, Emily disconnects her phone and stashes away all possibly dangerous items like clean products and knives, all except one. When Lilith returns home from school, Emily is cold and distant with her. Lilith asks how her mother is being treated in the asylum, which again piques Emily's suspicions, as she never shared that she was going to visit the asylum. In another scene, as Emily is picking Lilith up from daycare, she witnesses her whispering something into another girl's ear. Emily is now onto her, and is aware that this is the way Lilith operates. Emily lashes out and pulls Lilith roughly by the arm, threatening to pull her from daycare. As they are going down in the elevator, Lilith causes it to stop, and then suddenly begin to freefall. When the elevator is supposed to hit the ground, it's revealed as a hallucination. Lilith calmly leaves the elevator as a shaken Emily follows closely behind. Later, Emily finds Detective Mike Barron and confines the truth in him. However, this time he dismisses Emily, stating that this is just her grief speaking. That evening we see Emily installing extra locks on her bedroom door, and she is caught in the act by Lilith. During another regular day at work, Emily starts to lose her patience with another case, and she snaps at a woman on the phone. Emily's boss cautions her when he gets a phone call on his mobile phone, saying it's for Emily. On the other end of the call, she hears Lilith saying that she's been left home alone. We then see Emily go into what appears to be a hallucinatory state, as everyone else in the office disappears and Emily is left alone with the screeching sound of an office swivel chair. Later that night, Lilith knocks on Emily's locked bedroom door softly at first, and then starts banging loudly, while Emily yells at the girl to leave her alone. Emily is then chased out of her house in the middle of the night by a demonic vision of Margaret, Lilith's mother who she saw earlier at the asylum. The following day Emily is told that they have found a new family who will adopt Lilith in a few days, which she is now determined to prevent, knowing what the girl could do to the nice family willing to adopt her. Emily returns to Edward at the mental institution, who shares with her that the only way to get the girl is to wait for her to fall asleep, which she hardly ever does. Later in the asylum, Margaret is forced to hallucinate that she is being burned alive, while Edward hears the voice of Lilith coming from a fellow inmate, whom he stabs in the neck with a fork, and in the altercation that ensues ends up hurting himself and also dying. Meanwhile, Detective Barron receives a mysterious phone call from Lilith, which he shares with Emily, stating that he is on her side and believes that the girl is dangerous. Emily shares her plan with him, and he agrees to help her. Moments later, we see Emily getting a prescription for sedatives, which she claims she needs to help her sleep. While on his way over to help Emily, however, Detective Baron hallucinates that he is being followed and attacked by a vicious dog, and as he tries to fight it off, he ends up shooting himself. Emily receives a call and is told that Mike is dead, and now realizing that she is all alone in her attempts to get rid of the girl, she panics and barricades herself in her room. Lilith starts to reveal her true demonic form and forces her way in through the multiple locks that Emily installed earlier. Later, Emily feigns an attempt to reconcile with the girl and makes her a cup of chamomile tea in which she has dissolved the sedative that she acquired earlier. Once the girl is fast asleep, Emily pours gasoline all over her house and lights a match, setting it on fire with the girl still inside. This, however, is not enough, as it turns out Lilith was onto her. While she stands outside with the fireman coming to her, she sees the girl standing right by her. A policeman asks Emily to come down to the police station with him, so she gets in her own car with Lilith and follows the policeman. In a final attempt to get rid of the girl, she takes a sharp turn and drives at full speed. Lilith forces Emily to hallucinate that she is her own mother, years ago, with her as a child in the back seat, revealing that that is how her mother died. Pushing through the hallucination, Emily now feels empowered and takes control. She drives the car straight off a pier. As the car fills up with water, Emily fights with the demon and finally manages to lock it away in the car trunk. She breaks free and emerges out of the water as bubbles rise from where the car has sunk to the bottom of the lake. The movie ends with Emily sitting on the dock looking at the rising sun. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more movie recaps like this. Good night.